May I welcome you to Living Happy Ever After. That's exactly what we want to happen to you. We don't want the happiest day of your life, uh, you know, to be, to be your wedding day, maybe your 25th anniversary or your golden anniversary. Um, uh, we believe that all the ravages against the home will fail. Uh, we have people say, well, in a, in a few years, we won't have the kind of homes we have today uh, with one man and one woman. Don't ever believe it. Uh, uh, people like those people have risen before and uh, fallen on their face. Uh, Hitler said uh, that what he was teaching there in Nazism uh, would, would have 1,000 years of success. It didn't even have 1,000 days. And, and so what men say today uh, doesn't mean a lot. It's what the Bible has already said, and what the Bible says, it's stuck with it for 2,000 years, and you can believe it. Uh, Louise and I are delighted to talk to you about the, the subject of the home. And uh, we are interested in the home. We want to see homes stay together, stand together, or work together, play together, and be happy uh, together. Isn't that right, Mom? That's certainly right. That's the way God intended it to uh, be because uh, what, what peace is there on earth? He said uh, when the angels even came and, and announced his birth, he said, peace on earth, goodwill toward men. And we want to bring that right down to the family too, peace on, in the family and goodwill has to exist there, and yes, it can only be through Jesus Christ. That's true. Uh, today's lesson to you uh, has, has to do with something very particular. It's called 10 Principles of Marital Bliss, that if you will follow these principles, we don't uh, make anything ultimately conclusive. Uh, there might be a hundred principles, but here are 10 of them that we'd like for you to follow and for you to look at, and there are 15 of these lessons at this time, and this is number 13 of them. And so we're in the winding down time of them, and we hope we have blessed your home. We hope we have uh, loved you properly and caused you to forgive properly, because it's in this area that you build strong Christian homes. And so our prayers are with you, and our love is with you. And today as we study something very particular in these 10, 10 principles of marital bliss, we're going to just believe God that he'll bless you and your home. Amen. And uh, if you have a neighbor that you know that is having difficulty in their home, by all means, give them a call and tell them that, uh, that this would be very uh, good for them to watch. Uh, it's a time when we need to seek the Lord with all our hearts. And when God gave his commandments in the Old Testament, it was uh, to the home, I'm sure, and to those children of Israel that they had to have it bound upon their hearts. And the priests bound the laws upon their breastplates, and it was engraved there that we must worship God and put him first in our lives. And if it's in our lives, it'll be in our home. We believe it, and that is just great. Uh, ten principles uh, for marital bliss. We begin in Genesis chapter 24, verse 58, about a young girl who had just gotten engaged. They called Rebekah and said unto her, Will you go with this man? This man was Abraham's servant. And she said, I will go. There's, there, there's, there, there's a beginning of success right there. She didn't say, Well, I don't know what to do. Can you tell me what to do? She says, I'll go. Uh, in verse 59, they sent away Rebekah, their sister, and her nurse with her, and Abraham's servant and his and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said unto her, Thou art our sister, uh, be thou the mother of thousands, of millions, and, and let this seed, let thy seed possess the gates of those which hate thee. <laughs> and that's something. And Rebekah arose and her feet and her damsels, and they rode upon camels, and they followed the man, and the servant took Rebekah and went his way. And Isaac came from the way of the well. La, la, la Haroi, for he dwelt in the south country. And in verse 63, it says, Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the even time and lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the, can, the camel, uh, for she said unto the servant, What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant said, It is my master. Therefore she took the veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all things that he had done. And Isaac brought Rebekah into her, his mother's Sarah's tent and took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. 
Nothing begins so happy as marriage begins. Here's a young man and a young woman who had not seen each other before. <laughs> they had a third party to go and find her and brought her uh, to him. And he was exuberantly pleased and happy about the one that the servant brought. And, uh, and they lived a most beautiful life. Those two lived a beautiful, beautiful life. Now, uh, what are some of the principles uh, that we should live by in order to have a happy family? Uh, I'd like to begin with some very, very simple ones because it, did you know that most times it's the small things that separate families? It's the small things that separate families. Sometimes the small is he mislaid the toothpaste and, and she took my toothbrush, you know. It, it, you, you can go and replace it for a dollar and that was a thing that caused them to uh, not like one another. Uh, number one in the, in, the, in the principles of marital bliss is learn what the what the other loves and give it. Learn what your spouse loves and, and give it. If, if, they, if, they like, if they like coffee, see whether he likes it black or with cream or with sugar. And don't wait 10 years to, before you know how much to give. I mean, if you can't find that out the first day, you better start checking on yourself, you see. Uh, do something for your spouse that makes them to know that you care, that you understand, and that you're seeking to know what they like and what they don't like. If they like tea rather than coffee, learn if they like it iced or if they like it hot. Serve it the way that they like it. If they like steak, feed them good steak. If they like fish, feed them fish. If they like turkey or chicken, feed them uh, turkey or chicken. If that young lady of yours that you've married loves white or blue or red or yellow, uh, learn to appreciate the things that she, she likes and give to one another joyfully. One of the greatest principles of marital bliss is for you to learn what your spouse loves and give it. Don't take it away from them, but give it. And if you will do that, you've got almost, uh, you've almost got a, a guaranteed happy marriage right on the one spot. If you would just learn, you know, sometimes we try to do just that which irritates rather than that which loves and blesses. If you wished a happy home is the greatest treasure in the world and you should work for it, Work more than the men went out fighting for the gold in the, in the hills of California, uh, more than they did in digging the oil out of Texas. Um, yes, if you want a happy home, work at it. it. It doesn't come accidental. It comes because you put your heart uh, into it. The second uh, principle of marital bliss is don't demand more than, than 50%. And when you do it 50-50, don't demand more than that from the man or the woman or the husband or the wife. If you're going to demand more than you give, somewhere down the line, you're going to have trouble. You must be considerate of one another. And you've heard me say it, and I'd say it again. If each side gives 55%, you're past the halfway mark. If each one gives a little more than they should give, if each one gives a little more than they need to give, you are going to have happiness. You, you are going to have contentment and you're going to stay together. Uh, but any time that one gives 40 and the other gives 60, uh, you've got problems in that family. Anyone, someone has to go all the way over in order to please the other one, then you've got troubles in that family. You're going to have to learn to share, and you're going to have to learn to give, and to give at least 50%. But give more. Get, I, my, I say, if each one will give 55%, and each one has 5% left over, they have all that's coming to them plus, and that's what, that's what gives happiness. So uh, th these are the simple things that hold a family together, that if you don't demand, it's amazing what some people demand, and, and you don't give it, you just demand it. Uh, see, that's the bad thing. Uh, you don't give it, you just demand it, and that is not the way to have a happy home. Uh, number three, uh, take some care uh, for the family of, of, your, of your spouse. And uh, you husbands, go over to your uh, wife's parents and say, you know, I'd like to just thank you for such a beautiful person that you brought into this world and that you trained and that you fed and that you clothed and that you made her such a beautiful person for me to live with. And I want to thank you and I'll always be into your debt. You'd be amazed how much that will be appreciated and how much uh, your, that family will care. And, and the wife do the same. 
And, and don't be messing around thinking it's hard to do. That's the devil talking to you. It's easy to do. You go over to that, to that husband's family, and your husband doesn't need to be there. And, and, uh, and tell them how much you appreciate such a fine man as they produce for you. That they produce your dream, your dream man. And that you just want to say thank you, and you just want to say you appreciate it. You'll be amazed at what it will do. So uh, the one that reared your companion, love them. Your mother-in-law, your father-in-law, the grandparents, the grandchildren. Uh, this does not mean that you live with them or that you live around them. It only means that you respect them and you have consideration for them. I'm sure that if we can learn to care more for each other's families, we can have happier, happier homes. It's not right. You, you say, well, they said so-and-so. Well, forgive them, honey, and go on back over and have fellowship with them. There are people that stay away from their families because of something that was said. Forgive. If they want you to come back, say, yes, I'll come back. I forgive you. You can't carry a grudge. If you do, you make life miserable for yourself and miserable for others. Please don't do it. The fourth thing uh, you can call a principle of marital bliss is this. Uh, don't make uh, insulting remarks about the place of birth or the politics or the schools and so forth with which your mate went. Uh, there are people that, I don't know, every time they get with company, they have to make, oh, you know, uh, my, my wife, she's an Arky uh, from Arkansas, or she's an Okie uh, from Oklahoma, and, and says, I tell you, you can get the gal out of Oklahoma, but you can't get Oklahoma out of the gal. What do you want, a pie in the face? You know, a, a lick on the head with a frying pan? Is that what you're looking for? Why do you have to be a stirrer up of trouble? I can tell you why. You got the devil in you. If you get the devil out of you, you wouldn't want to say things like that. Uh, if you're going to make snide remarks about the one that you chose to marry, I tell you, you're always going to talk with that southern slang, aren't you? Well, you married her, and you wanted her, uh, you, you loved it then, why don't you love it now? I, I say that if you're going to have a happy marriage, uh, then you cannot make snide remarks about where your people love where they came from. And, and you can't forever downgrade where they came from and have a happy marriage. Now, that is not possible. Uh, you're going to have to accommodate yourself to it. A and the, the manner in which they speak that they may speak that way the rest of their life because they were brought up that way, and you lacked it well enough to marry them. That, that's where I want to bring you to. And if you lacked them that well, then you should still love them, you see. And uh, you should not be making uh, remarks, and you should not be telling tales uh, on, your, on your spouse out in public. Oh, let me tell you about him. Oh, let me tell you about her. That's the way to have trouble. That is the way to have, in every day of your life, live progressively. Live as if you're achieving something. Uh, when you're out to a party or something, uh, make it a moment of achievement. Uh, I, I've come here to display what I am, my wife and I. I've come here to grow. I've come here to increase. Don't just sloppy around and go to the devil and drink alcohol until you're drunk. And somebody says, well, he's an idiot. You don't need to do things like that. Uh, <coughs> Every case like that should be a, an opportunity for growth. Maybe I'll make a business connection here uh, that'll be good for me the rest of my life. Maybe I'll make a friend here that'll help me when I need a friend the most. And make it an achievement. And it's just low to go there and start making silly remarks against the husband or against the wife or against their families. Uh, forget it. You're in the family. You're part of the family. And don't bring it up anymore. And, and the shortcomings of the other one. Yeah, I tell you, he don't even know how to hang up a shirt. Well, honey, uh, teach him how, or don't discuss it. Hang it up for him, uh, because all you're looking for is trouble. He's going to say, and your old kitchen down there is as dirty as a hog pen, too. Then you've got two things going all at the same time. If you are going to spend your life making embarrassing remarks in public about your spouse, you are going to have hell on earth, and you're going to have a divorce. Now, that's clear enough, isn't it? Uh, these are things that we want to think about. They're principles of marital bliss. And all you've got to do is to follow them. And if you do, you'll be happy. And if you refuse to, uh, you can have your troubles. Now, to get away from anything that's so hard as that one, some of you have a difficult time there. Uh, let, let's go to one that's a little easier. And that is exchange 
uh, surprise things. Um, take, t- take somebody on a, on a surprise date. Uh, just walk in the door and said, everybody get dressed. We're going to go out and eat in the nicest restaurant in town tonight. They didn't expect it at all, you know. Or, or, or bring a flower. Or, or uh, believe in surprises. Or if your husband is working hard that day, you know it, fix him a dinner just a little better than usual uh, with the dessert that he lacks a little better than any other dessert. These surprises can awaken more joy and more love than almost anything else because it makes the spouse know you care for them. You're thinking about them when they're not there and you're preparing for them when they come. <laughs> you see, they are preparing, you're, you're preparing before they get there to give them some joy and give some happiness. So think about it, and every once in a while, do a surprise. If that little wife of yours has worked hard all day, take her out somewhere uh, that night, not to a sinful place, to a joyful place, uh, to a place where she will feel refreshed, and you will feel refreshed, and you'll go home refreshed. And, and, and uh, these, these special things, these special things cause special happiness, special joy in the home. I urge you to do it quite often. It may not even take a lot of money to do it. You can just say, let's everybody go for a ride down by the river. Uh, let's everybody go out to the lake for a while, you know? And, and even the kids will start jumping up and down. Oh boy, going to do something different. I can assure you that these, these special uh, uh, surprises uh, will bring a lot more love into your family and that you will get a lot more back yourself. You see, they that give, receive. And, and so if you can give surprises, uh, you can also get surprises. Now, I'd like to come to one that's a little harder than that, if you don't mind. I'm talking especially to you men. Uh, worship together. Worship together. Uh, th- th- these are, are, are essentials. Uh, they are they're, they're principles of marital bliss. <clears throat> uh, I'm a Presbyterian, I'm a Baptist, I'm a Methodist, I'm a Pentecostal, and I'm not going to go your way, you're going to go my way. Before you're ever married, you should talk over a lot of things, and one of them is where you're going to worship together. Now, it's worse when one is a Muslim and one is a Christian. You've really got yourself in a dither. Or one is a Jew and one is a Christian. Or, or you know, <laughs> I hope it's not one is a Republican, one a Democrat. You know, I, I hope it hadn't gone that far. But... I can assure you that you should worship together. Now, I'm not asking you, I'm not asking you to be wondrous over here one day and over there the next day and over there the next day. I, I am not asking that. I am saying that if you wish to have a happy home, settle down. You work at one job, settle down. And now, if, if the church your wife wants to go to is a little noisy, I wear you some earmuffs or something over there. Please her. Make her happy. There's some men that enjoy making their wives unhappy. And then you wonder why she doesn't give you hot coffee. It's, if she did, she might pour it on you. Uh, you've made her unhappy. Uh, a, a beautiful home is when both parties are trying to make each other happy. And we urge you in, in Jesus' name, worship together. Uh, and uh, you don't have to believe everything she does. I said worship together. Go to the same place and worship God. And... Uh, and uh, men are mean. I'll stay at home. I'll read the newspaper. I won't go to that church. I wouldn't be caught dead there. No, you're just full of the devils all wrong with you. You need to get it out of you. And you need to humble yourself and to go over and worship with your family and make them happy and make them pleased. And you'll be a better daddy and a better man by doing it. All right. Uh, the seventh one is uh, have vacation time together. It's wrong when the children go on vacation at one time, the husband goes on vacation, he goes way out hunting somewhere in the West, and the wife, she has her time down in Florida. That's a good way to bust up a home. Uh, you should have your vacations together. That's the time when you relax. That's the time when you start over again. Uh, that's the time when you come together in a new way. Uh, you're released from the anxieties and you're released from the pressures of your work. Please, uh, that, that is a principle of marital bliss. Have your vacation together. And then, number eight, don't, don't let a quarrel uh, get out of hand. Now, I can tell you, and I ought to spend a whole lesson on this. Mrs. Sumrall and I have, have lived together uh, for almost 40 years. I want a camera to hit her real strong right now. <laughs> we, we have uh, lived together about 40 years. 
we have never had what you call a big argument. You say, why in the world didn't you have a big argument? Because we took care of them while they were little. Yeah, when, when, when just a little friction came up, we both just shut our mouths and had prayer. And, and, and that took care of it, and it was gone. Now, that's what God wants. That's what God wants out of you. Now, if you, if, if you are going to let yourself build up inside, anger, you know, they don't say much, but boy, when they explode, well, any bullfrog can explode. That's not being smart. Take care of problems when they're small. Take care of them as they begin, when they're still in the talking stage. And, and, and if you do, there won't ever be any big ones if you take care of the little ones. I urge you, in Jesus' name, to, to take them, not only to talk them out, but to get them out of your whole insides to where you'll say, Brother Sumrall, I tell you, I don't have that kind of problem. It's all taken care of. I would say that uh, the uh, ninth one ought to be your children uh, must take second place in your lives. It's very easy for a parent, a husband or a wife, to permit a child to assume a position of importance in the home that was never designed for a child. The father and mother are a team, and nobody's to come between that team. They're to stick together in everything. They're to speak the same language to the same kids. So whenever the kids hear something from either parent, it's always the same. They must discipline together, and they must not have favorites among the children. It is very important, it is very important that children take second place. I know of homes that went to pieces because of children. The children found out they could work the father over, they could work the mother over, they could tell stories one way and the other, and they kept disharmony in that home. Uh, it's wrong. It's very wrong. And God wants you and your wife to be together, stick together, and the children are to take their place as children and never to assume a place of, uh, in the home between the father and between the mother. The number 10 uh, that I would like to uh, say is a good principle for marital bliss is that in public places, uh, whatever you're doing, whether it is speaking or whether you're just there together, don't contradict another. You say, it's three miles over there. Oh, no, it's just two. Uh, it rained all day. Oh, it didn't rain but a little bit. The sun was out most all day. Now, now, I'm sorry to tell you how stupid you are, but you're very stupid. You don't go out in public to make light of your loved one. You don't go out and contradict everything they say. And if they have said something that's not quite right, just forget it. Just forget it. Because happiness is much more important than, than your little pride within you wanting to put somebody down. You can go ahead and do it if you want to. I'm only telling you how to have marital bliss. I'm only telling you. Now, now men call it nagging. I don't know what the women call it. I guess they, they got another name for it. A pouting, sit in the corner and won't say anything, you know? But wh whichever way it is, if you want to destroy your home, you can destroy it. Not hard to destroy anything. You know, you can get more people destroying things than you can building things. More, more people are destroyers than builders. But if you want to have a happy home, uh, you, should, you, should, you should never contradict each other in public. If one has made a mistake, it's none of your business. Leave it that. Leave it that way. And if somebody else contradicts them, then you can come to the aid of your own spouse and say, well, possibly she meant it this way or he meant it that way. And you can always be a healer and not a herder. Now, if I could have one more, <laughs> which is fudging a little bit, is that you spend, you spend as much time together as you can. The more time you can spend together, the better. Uh, whether it's in your pleasures, swimming, or wherever it is, or even at your business. Uh, don't tell your wife she can't never walk into your office. Tell her she can walk in there, and that she's the most welcome person in the world to walk into your office. Spend as much time together as you can. It's the togetherness that makes a happy home. Spend as many evenings together as you can. A preacher doesn't have much trouble with that. If he has to preach every night, does he, Mom? <laughs> that's for sure. He's got a fixed. <laughs> he just knows yeah. what he's got to do. Yeah, that's right. But he's then the, the wife should be there just sitting there and taking it in and Yeah, she listening. should. And I've been to places where the preacher preached and the wife stayed home. And that's a good way to have trouble, isn't it? And that's that's yeah. just for sure. It certainly is. Be together 
and love one another. You know, married life is wonderful, isn't it? Well, we've found it so, yeah. and I don't see why it shouldn't be. Yeah, I couldn't get along without you, dear me. My, that makes me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't. And, and so we need, we need one another.